You know, um, I, I would just say this in regards to, um, you know, what Joe Douglas is trying to do here. This is uh, Jamal Adams. Now comes Le'Veon Bell. Uh, these guys are passive aggressive, bitching their ways out of here. And and quite frankly, uh, you know, they, they neither one neither one of the players were here because of Joe Douglas. And you can't have no matter what you think of Adam Gase, no matter what you think of the job he's doing, and it's not a great job that he's doing. Uh, it's it's hard enough to to try to get a team on the same page, but when you have what you supposedly have one of your stars taking like liberties uh, social media wise, and I believe violating the social media policy of the New York Jets, because I do believe that there are 32 teams out there that have a policy that go over that policy with their players, and they tell them that this is the way that social media should be used. And one of the ways that it shouldn't be used is when you're taking shots at your team or th- or saying that you want out of there. And so this has like, become the norm in professional sports, which is uh, really, really tough to take. Um, all I can tell you is that uh, we I... I Fully expected it to happen. It's just a matter of how it was going to happen. Nobody was taking on that contract. And there may be somebody that will look to pick him up and, you know, get him on the cheap because they won't have to pay him. And maybe he'll go and he'll be motivated to go play there. I don't know. I mean, it seems like, you know, you, you really find out a lot about the people when you're losing. And you, you, you know who you want on your ship as it's going down because uh, the, the rats are going to jump off the ship uh, when they get the chance. And this is one of those players that created nothing but aggravation and problems for a coach who didn't want him in the first place. So uh, all I can tell you, again, it's, it just goes back to the original way all of this went down with Adam Gase and Mike McCagnan and Christopher Johnson. And this is what happens. And it's not surprising in any way, shape, or form. So we can say the same old Jets, that's fine. But this is a new regime dealing with players that they didn't want to deal with in the first place. Yeah, it really wasn't something that made sense at the time, and it's bearing exactly out that way. And the worst part about this was that Mike McCagnan was trying to save his job at the time because he had to hit home runs in that free agency period and also that draft or he was going to be done that's the way it was framed that he had all this money to spend and this was the most important free agency period in off season the jets had had in a long time because they had used the previous couple of years to rebuild and get under the cap and all of that stuff and then this is what happened he went out and he signed tremaine johnson who was here for like six minutes pulled a couple hamstrings and then disappeared he signed Le'Veon bell who, of course, we know the story of him, who just really, I mean, you could not have screwed up more than Le'Veon Bell did. If he thinks that he is some sort of martyr for the rest of the running backs out there getting contracts, he is dead wrong because he screwed the whole thing up. There was a couple of times that the Steelers offered to make him the highest running back in football, highest paid running back in football. He declined that because he wanted more money, sat out a year, got a way worse contract from the Jets, and now he was here for a year and a half and got cut. So that whole thing blew up in his face and most of his career now. I mean, the last three years of his career have been totally wasted. We'll see if he does anything with the, the rest of this season. So that wasn't smart. But, yeah, I mean, this this is how you get in this situation is when you keep a general manager that feels like he needs to make a splash, you hire a head coach who hates players, apparently, especially running backs, and then you have this combustible situation and it doesn't last. It's so, not just it's not, not that he hates players. It's, it's that he does not work well with players, you know, who who act like Le'Veon Bell was acting. I mean, come on. I, I don't know what to tell you. Adam Gase didn't want him in the first place. And, you know, Le'Veon put himself in this own situation. And he was the one that was doing, again, it's kind of like, you know, Jamal Adams. Jamal Adams was doing the same thing. You yeah. know, these guys wanted out of here. Now, they may have wanted out of here because of Adam Gase, and that's a whole other discussion. But the fact of the matter is, is they went public with uh, their disdain for the Jets and the organization and the team and everything else. And and quite frankly, you're not going to see any tweets from his teammates wishing him well. I can guarantee you that. Just like you didn't see any teammates uh, wishing Jamal Adams well. So these guys were not popular in the locker room, and these guys were created more of a distraction and more of a problem. Uh, they love to talk about themselves and how great they once were or maybe one day will be in the case of Jamal Adams. But you know, at, you know, for the Jets, it's it's basically it's addition by subtraction right now. You you have to get rid of players that are pulling your team in the wrong way, and you don't. The thing for the coach is the influence on the locker room, and this is why when Bill Parcells would take over a team, he would always bring in four or five of his quote unquote guys, 
And those guys would come in there and they would run the locker room. And, and Bill would have a way of saying, you know, I'll keep you around for an extra couple of years. I'll pay you an extra couple million dollars. What, what, you you want to go work on a garbage truck? You want to go do this? You want to go do that? You want to be my guy in the locker room? 